What's up? It's Reiki. You're listening to the Vanguard show. Reiki, thank you so much for being here. How do you feel? How do the songs feel? Man, songs felt great. Uh, the last one, Lucy in the Skies, is fresh from the studio. It's, it's not even, hasn't been mixed yet. It's just something I wanted to try and put out into the air. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been, it's, it felt good. It felt good. Y'all, this is cool. This is cool. Sweet. Yeah. Happy you're here. Happy the yeah. songs felt good. Tell me about Lucy in the Sky then. What was kind of the vision behind that? You said it was new. What did you, what was your thought process going into that song? Um, so I actually made that on a Sunday, uh, like a few Sundays ago. Like actually maybe five Sundays. Uh and I had a my engineer just came over to my crib, uh, and we just wanted to cook up something new. Yeah. Uh that day I had been kinda of indulging in some uh psilocybin <laughs> products and I wanted to make something that had some sort of just psychedelic uh just a refreshing vibe to it and I just heard that bass line and from there we just kind of just kept adding to it and it was just such a magical thing it just came together just like so quick like very wow. just cohesive every every element just came I just heard it the guitar was speaking to me and it just it just came together so it was cool uh probably one of the fastest songs that I've have been like um conjured but yeah i'm really excited about that one i want to drop that on my birthday so june cool. 23rd so i wanted to test it out see so we'll see you know if y'all like it you know you might get it yeah but yeah so does the speed of which you make a song kind of reflect how much you like it or is it just the process of it all just it is it faster when it is faster do you like the song more I made some trash fast songs. Okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> like, but I feel like it's more so like a feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. If if you don't have to force it, keep going back and be like, oh, what's the next thing? Like, yeah. what's the next element I want to do? What I want to say? Mm -hmm. And it just speaks to you. Every artist lives for those moments, you know, because it's really just a magical thing. It's really just, just you're tapping into things around you and your own experiences and things like that so it gets to be i think yes sometimes it just ends up being stuff that's some of your best work yeah you know what i mean um but yeah just just allowing yourself to experiment too uh so certain songs will lend you that like you're like i'm just gonna throw this in there you sure. know there's other songs where it's like i'm gonna think from top to bottom right and i learned early to stay out of the results you know and to just create yeah. until you feel is right so i wouldn't say i don't want to put out that like it needs to be fast for you to really you know yeah, for yeah, it to yeah. be like a hit or whatever sometimes they'll, they come like that there's there's hits that really come from refining year year after year moment after moment ch different versions you know like happy with pharrell's bunch of different mixes heartless by kanye just love lockdown bunch of different just like ideations of it so yeah you know if it feels good it's good yeah for sure well then well then tell me about um chaos because i know there was some conflict behind <clears throat> kind of giving this more maybe maybe vulnerable and just using the guitar more the acoustic guitar it w there was some conflict behind that right and how much to show to others <sighs> chaos was the first song i wrote on acoustic guitar um i think coming into it is just when you first start writing on guitar you just kind of just feel like everything you do is novice because right. you just hear what can be done and you're like i don't know if this is really it you know like if, if this will be taken seriously um uh, so i made that with my engineer revisions um in his room in saint paul um and uh we just, you know, tracked the acoustic guitar. It was our first time doing that, too. So even that was, like, a learning curve. And then everything with that song just came to me. <clears throat> the the melody, the vocal line, all that, the words just came to me. It's a very, uh, it's a vulnerable song for sure because I'm definitely, it was, like, my first time really speaking on something I'm actually going through at that present moment. Mm -hmm. It was very fresh. Um, but looking back, to be honest, 
in hindsight, I'm listening to it, and I sort I like I think my sister said this, but I sort of sound like an asshole because I'm like pretty much like this girl is going through chaos in her head, and I'm about to dip. Like I'm like. Mm. I can't stay, you know what I mean? So there's been a part of me that's been battling, like, do okay. I want to put out that sure. type of message, like, or do I want to put out, like, you know, stick through with somebody and, like, you know, be their right hand and, like, allow them to grow, you know? Mm -hmm. But in the moment that I made it, it was very true and yeah. raw, so I just yeah. wanted to, that's the energy that it has to be. But, yeah, that song is first of its kind for me. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So then where does that lay? Where do we do we see that one down the road or does that kind of stay in the vault for a little bit? Man, it's it's almost mixed, man. Okay. It's almost I mean, it it is mixed. It's it's ready. Uh just finished some touches on it this last Friday. So I think, you know, send that to the homie Alec Ness. Shout mm -hmm. out Alec. He's gonna get that sounding cool. And I would like to get that out. This month is my mom's okay, cool. birthday month. Nice. Uh, she loves when I sing and just like don't have a lot of craziness around me. No, you know. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to get that out this month. And I think that one's cool too because it has like acoustic elements. But I, I had to have some of me in there, and like had some 808s, you mm -hmm. know. And so it's a cool little hybrid. I feel like it can it can mesh two worlds for sure. Yeah, yeah. and that's cool. Shout out to your mom dropping it for your mom. And two things you said there your mother, and <clears throat> just singing in general. So I want to kind of dissect that and talk about how the name Reiki come, stems from your mom. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> uh, I feel like I tell this story. It's just like every day. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. crazy. But so, yeah, my mom, uh, she battled with some anemia. You know, it's a blood. this is a blood disorder, beta thalassemia, I believe. So that's like low iron, you know, which is just a bad combination when you're pregnant you know I'm trying to uh conceive and <clears throat> give birth so in Cook County where I was born in Chicago um they were pretty much saying because I was her last I was her fourth child they were thinking that you know blood flow wise it wouldn't be a healthy pregnancy it wouldn't be something that um there's a high risk you know um and in that hospital the doctors have sort of gave her this this uh this declaration, you know what I mean? Like, this is a, it's a high risk for this. But there was a nurse, I guess, my mom was talking to, and the nurse was like, you should try. We have, like, an Eastern medicine, like, area center in our hospital. You should try Reiki. Which Reiki means life force energy in Japanese. Um, and it's a healing technique where the practitioner or Reiki master that... They are actually have to go through like three degrees of training and attunement to be a Reiki master to administer Reiki to other people, but it's it's the healing of hands without touching. It's just transferring life force energy, ki, which is energy in Japanese, chi, Chinese energy, same thing. And so she want she she wanted to try it obviously because she wanted to have a healthy birth, mm -hmm. and uh, she had done I believe a few sessions and then. I think her water broke, and I was born, and she, you know, just wanted to name me after it because she felt like that was the reason why I was here. And uh, it's also cool, a little fun fact is, like, I'm super close with my mom, but I think she she actually didn't allow the nurses to, like, take me from the, the room where, like, all of her other children, like, they, they were, like, taken from yeah. her as soon as you're born and, like, put you somewhere else, which is kind of weird that they do that. Mm -hmm. But I was in the room with her, like, the whole time and never mm -hmm. left. So, like, we just have this cool bond. That's yeah, cool. do you think that's kind of developed in this Yeah, yeah. It's, definitely, it's definitely wild, but, um, but yeah, shout out my mom. It's my rock, Yeah, sure. That's what a, what a powerful story. And so kind of yeah. you have this dictionary definition of what Reiki is, but what does Reiki <clears> mean to you? Life force energy, and it's in that definition, it's just, just universal life force energy, you know. So, I think I embody it through my music, mm -hmm. that's the best way I could describe it. I'll go from one vibe to another, and you may think like Reiki is just this holistic, like easy listening, very massage therapy, like right. but just chill stuff. But I embody life force energy, right? It's part of what allowed me to be born, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's just like being universal, you know? Not like 
you, we have a range of different energies within us. We don't have to embody one, you know? So musically, I don't embody one genre. I'm genre fluid, you know what I mean? So, like, I like, I just like to go from, like, whether it's punk to, like, R&B to rap to whether well, it's metal coming soon, you yeah. know what I mean? Just anything, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, I look at it like that, but it's also helped me to just have a lot of... Uh, love and grace for other human beings knowing that we all embody life force energy within us mm -hmm. you know regardless of race orientation religion pol politics any of that like the true thing that we have you knowing people say like oh, we're, we're all human it's like we all have life force energy that's like the single thing that is allowing us to speak and breathe and talk mm -hmm. and communicate right now so it's allowed me just to just stay connected and so that's a little bit of a message of mine that I want to put out there, you know, just to allow people to be versatile. Yeah. You know, you can wake up tomorrow and be different, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you can try new things, experiment, but also know that, um, yeah, everyone, we're all we're all in energy. You know, that's what life is, existence. You know, every one of us have life force energy in us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive. So it's just universal. It's yeah. connected. And what I always feel like is universal is music, too. So I feel like they go really well together. Yeah. And so give me some of the, like, early instances of you knowing music would always be a part of your life. I think I, like, have seen you wrote, write, like, three years old, been just around music. It had always been there. What are some early instances, <clears throat> instances um, that impacted you in your music? So my mom says that I was singing around three. Right. And she had heard me, and my siblings gonna get mad, but she was like, "Man, he sounds good. Like he sounds a lot better than these kids." Yeah, so I'm yeah. putting through. Lessons. Were your other siblings also singing, or was it yeah, more they of were a you singing, thing? Like, okay, we're all in the arts. My mom got us in the arts really cool. early. Yeah, I've been acting since I've been a kid. I was in dance and did all all the above, just like the the three mediums, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Acting, singing, and dancing. So, yeah, three. I guess I was singing. Um, I remember performing in church like at five. Okay. And then over time just developed something. I I found that like I liked singing along to music. Um, my mom was very instrumental in just like allowing me to be exposed to a lot of different styles. Mm -hmm. So I mostly was singing like gospel stuff. Okay. You know, and, and just performing at a lot of different churches because the church would hear and then, like, the next week I go to another church and sing there. Um, but then I learned about Luther Vandross and, like, just classic R&B mm -hmm. in, like, junior high. And just started, started singing to, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My classmates, you know, like the girls at the junior high. Really? And just the smooth Luther, you know? Yeah. Marvin Gaye, Usher, 112, uh, Boys of Men. Uh, so I found that, like, secular uh, just just love um and then my mom would always have like Andre Bocelli singing I mean like playing around so I would just mimic everything mm. you know so early age I just got good at mimicking so I would mimic like that classical voice that he's got and uh so I've I also did like a residency with the Minnesota Opera you know what I mean like uh, I had a, a voice coach Daxter Cuneo at McPhail Center for Music who like really got me deep in the opera okay. but I just it just, just wasn't. Yeah, when did it, that stop? How did that even, okay, how did that yeah. start and how did that stop opera singing? I just used to make fun of, like, the voice. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to do it now. Were but. you imitating it, but it actually, but it, like, were people like, oh, that kind of sounds good, though, because it sounds yeah. like. So, like, at singing. school, like, in any choir I was yeah. in, I was always doing, like, the small group choir, you know, just, like, the whatever. And I was just, like, in those settings, kind of just, like, let it off just as a joke. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just got a lot of <clears throat> confirmation that, like, is low-key, like, kind of solid. And so yeah. then we went to a vocal coach who's, like, a classical person just kind of, like, keep building it, like, mm -hmm. understanding, like, where it comes from, yeah. like, diaphragm, all that. And then he was, he was, like, working closely with the Minnesota Opera, so mm -hmm. he was, like... You know, this is a shot, you know? So yeah. Was it just I, you that kind of got a, selected out of that? Or yeah, I other even, classmates or other? Man, it was low-key just some extracurricular. It wasn't okay. even, like, involved with school. Gotcha. This was just, like, a like a private, like, um, like 
yeah, like music, mm -hmm. education, school, whatever. So I like audition for workshops. There's this dude named Alan Keys. Probably nobody. I mean, shout out to him, but just probably no one like in our generation knows about. But he's like a big classical dude from New York. And I auditioned to be in his workshop. And I was like, first time, like another confirmation. I'm like, damn, I actually could like do this. Like mm -hmm. low key. Because he only picked like three students. You know what I mean? Um, so then from there, it was kind of like, my my vocal coach, he was like, we should get you into the Minnesota Opera. So I went through auditions. Um, it went cool, but honestly, it just didn't it just didn't end up aligning. Cause like, yeah, shout out to them. No, yeah, no, no, mm -hmm. you know, shade, but it's just like it's very high strung people. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, and I was like 18, yeah. mm -hmm. and like just looking around, like it's a lot of white people, yeah, and sure. like they all like you know what I'm saying. It's just it was just not my not my vibe, but I, I I wanted to try it and do it, so yeah. it was it was a cool experience. Yeah, cool. Any like big takeaways from that? Whether it is what you take on to a performance, how you go about singing, any big takeaways from having that background, or did it just kind of? <laughs> it's just it's, it's a stuff. that I respect the classical route. Yeah, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it like you have to get a BA. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, to even like join like a, a theater or an opera. So I think that's that's mad cool. Uh, it's a high level of professionalism, you know, very, very just deep attention to detail, cool stuff. But yeah, I, I just took from it just kind of the, um, the physical aspect of sure. singing yeah. and like yeah, yeah. how to just like project and do mm -hmm. all those types of things, which helps me if I'm doing punk, you know, stuff like right, that. Just right. kind of like, the way I'm able to just like project and use certain parts of my voice, which has also helped me just to be versatile because I can sound different on any song, you know, and it's just about like how you're going about it. So, yeah. yeah. Shout out opera. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, there's so many different like pathways I want to go just off of all of this, but I am <laughs> curious too, like your music in general, kind of, I, I feel like a lot of it revolves around maybe like relationships and love. And I, I know you were kind of tying that back and talking about how there was a love for R&B there and in middle school, especially. And was, <clears throat> was there any serenading that went on? Did anybody get serenaded? Any, any classmates? <laughs> and how, how, how was the success rate? <laughs> success rate was damn near hundred percent, man. Okay. It, 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 it did go live, right? You know, <laughs> What was the first one? Do you, do you have any, or, like, what was the most memorable one for you? Man, there's just too many, bro. Yeah. Just like, really? Okay. Serious. I was, <laughs> and, like, a lot of it was indirect. Okay. You know, because I was saying, like, so many things where, like, my classmates would be, a, so it's like, you just get this wide collection, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, like, singing, like, National Anthem. You just get, oh, like, okay. the whole, sure, like, sure, sure. little. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so it was never, like, a, you sit down and let me sing this Brian McKnight song. There's been that. There's definitely been that. Um, what is one song I sang, man? Uh, I know I sang a lot of Boys to Men, some Usher okay, okay. confessions to, to some some ladies at Osseo Junior High at some point. But yeah, uh, that was like a big, to be on every, every, you know, male singer when they understand the influence that it has right. on women and Mm -hmm. It kind of motivates you to just like yeah. Was that know. was that like when you maybe wanted to take some steps up and be like, oh, I do actually want to pursue this more, given that there is something that comes with it. Yeah, you just see, you know, you see what <laughs> comes with. It. But <clears throat> but then you get to a point where you see like all the guys are like saying like, oh, this is corny, this is like soft, this is whack. Mm -hmm. So then you have this balance, which I've always dealt with. I know any singer out there understands this. Yeah. That's like. Sometimes you feel like boxed in. Sure. Like people are just always gonna like punk you because you're just like soft, like yeah, yeah, singer, yeah. singer boy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like heartbroken all the time. But, yeah. um, but yeah, I definitely saw the benefit and how you know certain certain people react, like women would just gravitate towards it. So early on, it was like big, like oh yeah, this is what I should do. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Were, were there so moments where that kind of went away and it was like, I want to do this for myself? Uh, 
I'm sure that was always there. Yeah. But, like, were there, were there <clears throat> moments where it was, like, more defined? I would say when I started competing, you know, like, doing, like, talent competitions, that's when I was like, okay, this this can actually change my quality of life, you know what I mean? So then it's like, okay, that's just a byproduct. That's not, like, why we do it. It's great. Right. But, like, right. we're doing this because <clears throat> been given a gift from God, and I want to use it and, and, and grow it and, like, influence and help people. Because uh, early on, I was, like I said, I was singing gospel and stuff like that. So being able to see how it would affect people would be great. And I understood yeah. that, like, the platform that I was on was not for me. It was it was for others, you know. And even as an artist, uh, we all have to come to that point where we understand we're just servants. We're not, it's not for us. Although we enjoy what we do, the art is meant to be um, consumed by people. And, yeah, it's for them, you know. You're not going to go on a worldwide tour if it's just about you. You know what I mean? People like that, they get weaned out. Like, if you, you if you really understand this medium, it's really just for, like, it's for people to to enjoy and to, to be able to not only escape from reality mm -hmm. but to just have a different perception yeah which is powerful that's why art is like super powerful yeah and that's interesting because does that infiltrate your writing process then or is that you and then once you have the product then it's about knowing that it's not just for you at that point when does it become this universal thing rather than something that starts with you that's a great question i think man I think the the longing to go make music, mm -hmm. I think at some point, yeah, there's there's some some you involved in that. Yeah. But the the process, the grind, mm -hmm. like showing up every time, yeah, mixing, hearing it a bunch of times. That's when it's like it's it's for people. Oh, okay, okay, you know, sure. Like, yeah. Because you have to know, like going through that process is yeah, it's not for the weak. Yeah. yeah. Albums and things get bigger, you know what I mean? Uh more eyes on it. Any all the above. It's like it, it that's when it really you have to have a why it's associated because no one's gonna just wanna put themselves through that. Some of the things that we have to deal with as artists mm -hmm. just in the process. So yeah. um and then yeah, the song just being out in the airwaves. That's when it becomes, you know, a universal thing as well. And you get to see people engage with it and things like that. So, that, yeah, sure. Yeah, and I can just see through conversations with you that Reiki is, like, a part of this process and very much so almost addicted to that process. <clears throat> and to get to that point, um, I like that we're kind of peeling back the curtain. Yeah, getting the curtain back a little bit. And um, I'm just curious, when did it become reiki versus was it primus hall at one point yeah I, <laughs> you are dang you're like nardwar <laughs> pulling some stuff so yeah that was uh <clears throat> i was attached to like some of my lineage you know like okay. i had, like great 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 grandfather's name was primus and oh, cool. okay. the reason why reiki has been somewhat of a a challenging thing for me having that name is because growing up no one could say it right mm. And no one could spell it right. No one just like I say Reiki and they say Ricky and it's like sure. Reich or like whatever. Yeah. So as a kid, especially I was moving schools a lot. I was a bad kid as well. So like mm -hmm. I had to just like uh I was just dealing with so many different changes in life at that point. You know, just learning and figuring things out. So when it came to like people just not getting my name, I just was like just yes, yeah, call me whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. So when I started really trying to take music like seriously, um, I was like, I need like a name. Like I need like go as something that's like Travis Scott. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like sure. like Labyrinth, you know, like just this this thing, Gallant, like all this. So I was like, let me still have a little bit of me in it, but yeah. let it sound cool. Primus Hall. But then I realized it's a band named Primus and I was like, damn, this is gonna be oh, a trademark sure. nightmare. Yeah. And but Primus is a cool name. It's Latin, it means first among equal. And I, I resonate with that. That's just like a leadership quality to be the first among equals, you know, not above, but just, you know what I mean? You lead in a line type of thing, but you're just that point of command, yeah. but you're serving 
the people around you. So, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so the dropping of Primus Hall was more because <laughs> of that conflict with the band already existing? That and just, I was just like, <clears throat> I don't want every artist, like, you know, we have this vision, like, it's going to work out. Yeah. And I, when I had, when I, you know, really just like vision casted, like down the line, I was like, I don't want to. I don't want people to say, call me something that's not me. Okay. I don't want people to be like, oh, Primus. And mm-hmm. I just have to deal with that. Like, no, that's not my name. You know yeah. what I mean? And just this, yeah. like, this disassociated identity of yourself. I just want to be me. And it's a hard name to, like, embody because I'm competing with, like, Reiki, Reiki, you right. know, like on right. Spotify, on Google. Yeah. It's like all the like, healing, you know, but I'm mm-hmm. just like, no, stick it out. The goal is to be like Pitbull. You sure. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You Google Pitbull. You hear it and it's associated. You Google yeah. him though, and he comes up, not the dog. Yeah. I'm yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. like <laughs> hopefully uh lap Reiki, but shout out to Reiki, all the practitioners and stuff. Right. Don't come for my neck, but mm-hmm. I'm coming for y'all's. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. So it's been a journey to get to this point and it it'll continue to be yeah. a process and a journey. Um but it's cool to have that vision in mind. And just speaking about like your vision of music, there's uh, 10 singles you have out on Spotify right now. Uh, <clears throat> no direct project, which I want to talk about in a second here too, but um, there was a track that you had early on, I think in 2019, for you that's not on streaming platforms mm-hmm. anymore. Is there any reason behind that? I That one never made it to streaming. Oh, okay. Because okay. it was like a YouTube beat. Gotcha. And it was like okay. the first song I had really mm-hmm. ever dropped. It actually got, yeah, Elevator Magazine talked about that song. Um, got put on it, like the current at some point, right? Or did well, it my song, my single power uh, okay, got okay, put okay. on the current, gotcha. which is just like a year later, mm-hmm. I believe. But uh, but yeah, that one is just I was experimenting, put on SoundCloud. It was, it was like around the time it was just like people around me were like, "Yo, you got like drop something." I was like, "Okay, let me just okay," and I put it out. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, people like it. I'll mm-hmm. keep going. People don't. I won't. People liked it. I was the first time. I was like using instagram people like sharing my song on the story i was like oh this yeah. is dope and then like four days later elevator magazine talked about it so i was like oh, okay maybe i can do this yeah you know cause yeah someone like mm-hmm. externally outside the bubble you know i'm getting some proof of concept and like right. some validation yeah so yeah do you really think like if that wouldn't have come that would have been the end of it and let's just right, let's no, just not even go down that route do you think it's made it easier. It's still, a, yeah, man, sure. it's still a struggle sure. every day, man. Right. It's hard. Right. This is hard. Mm-hmm. But I would have probably kept going. That was just a, a good little... Um, it catapulted a lot of things, for sure. Yeah. So then we're here now. We've talked about some of the stuff that's gotten you here today. <clears throat> what does the future hold? And I feel like you have been working on a project in 2023. And I guess I was kind of asking a bunch of questions there, but... um. Why hasn't there been one yet? Let's start there. I'm trying to figure out who I am. Okay. And what it sounds like. Okay. I know projects to be like a cohesive top to bottom album, record, you know? Right. All the ones that I've studied and loved, but I just experiment so much. And like, if you can see like all my songs on Spotify is just a range of different genres. Sure. Yeah. That I'm going through, and I've scrapped behind the scenes probably six projects. You know what really? I mean? Like just like, nah, I don't want that one to be nah. And I finally embraced the versatility and sure. in the in the shapeshifter that I am. So now, when I approach the project that I'll be dropping this year, it's like it's gonna go a lot of different places, but it'll still have this like cohesive concept. I guess. Okay. But it'll be explored through like different genres, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's basically been it. It's just singles have just been a way to like test the water and yeah. experiment, even yeah. like how do y'all like this version of me or this mm-hmm. version of me, you know? So it's been cool though. I've been able to have a a little audience, you know, even from the singles. Cause usually that comes from like a project and yeah, I'll be yeah. like, Okay, so like once I do I think the project's the next evolution for me of uh, just, like, taking this to another level. It's, like, allowing someone to have, like, a full product of me. Yeah. It's going to be cool. A lot of plans for that. 
So in that project, have you found a voice through not being tied down by a voice or is there like something cohesive that rings through? I also was like, I really love the live experience. I just love going to shows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Any artist is watching this. I've probably been at your show. 100%. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I just love supporting obviously, but then just like, just taking in and just studying and, being in those environments is cool. So I feel like the type of music that I want to put out, like I want it to translate in that live s setting a certain way. And so I really put emphasis on like, how do I do that? Okay. And what way to do that? And I, I figured it out. I figured it out now. I want to have real, I want to have tracks. I want to have production. Yeah. And I want to have live music, you cool. know, instruments. And a whole story. I'm just tying in everything. It's like sure. gonna feel like it's like a a musical, but a cool player yeah. fire ass musical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. not some weird like it's just gonna be like music you hear yeah. that's like relevant, but there's like a whole story behind it. It might be some costume changes, it might be, you wow. know what I'm saying, a whole visual uh landscape and just sonic a sound design throughout the whole top to bottom it's a production so I've, yeah. I put a lot been putting a lot of time into it yeah and so like my first like release show I'm gonna be able to kind of bring you into a world you're not just gonna see me just come on stage and be like hey my name is Reiki let's play right, some songs right 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 yeah huh it's about to be like crazy you, you hear some frequencies and it's gonna be wild but yeah, yeah. it's gonna be cool top that, to bottom that's yeah. awesome and so you're bringing people into a world. What is that world? What is that story? My life. Uh, it's also going to be a mirror. Okay. You know, the art reflects reality, but it is. You know what I mean? So there's a project that I've been kind of conjuring up. It's called Mindless Dimension. Okay. And it's and it's based off of the, the brain and the vat theory, you know, uh, some philosophical stuff. Yeah. But... Pretty much it's just like tapping into a a version of yourself that is very impulsive, it's very mindless, which if you if we were to say like art reflects reality, you can see like things like TikTok and just like social media and scrolling and consumption and content. Right now it's just like you can just escape and mindlessly go through a lot of things not knowing yeah. what you're even being succumbed to yeah like the energy that you're you're consuming you know and what that does to you on a day-to-day -day, like waking up just seeing a bunch of different things you know graphic images all this stuff or maybe just you know hypersexualization and just how that changes you all that stuff so like this project is about i'm tapping into that and making it very obvious so it's not really going to sound like me as, like, a person. But I, I definitely embody some of the things because, like, you know, we're living in this world. But, yeah, it's just, it's like going into the mindless dimension. So it's, like, really just, like, a psychosis for yeah. the amount of time that the EP is playing and for the show of just, like, traveling through a lot of different themes of what we are experiencing. And, like I said, putting it in front of your face so you can understand, like, oh, like... That's why I think like this. Or that's why I act like that. That's why I talk like this. Because mm -hmm. you've been tapped into, you know? Yeah, yeah. And there is a dimension that you can live in within this dimension. And it's mental, you know? Like, you can be a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. So, that one is, is going to be cool. It's like a whole concept. I want to make it a short film at some point. Cool. But then in the fall, not saying what that one is about. But that's definitely... Uh, it's going to be pretty alternative pretty uh a, a mixture of all of them kind of heavy and just like you know bringing in all my influences but talking about the the journey of an artist and the ability to understand that we only have a, a finite time to create you know in our life mm -hmm. so like the choices that we make with what we create is actually really important because like tomorrow you never know. I might not be here. So all the choices I made creatively and the things I decided to create and put out into the world, they need to have a bit more um, intention. I feel like 
And that's just like the opposite of Miles Dimension. That's when like you go in the studio, gotcha. you may indulge in a substance or whatever, and you just mindlessly make some stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's the energy that I made that project. I was just like, I'm actually just gonna just like try this, smoke yeah. this, yeah. go in there, and not think about it. Mm -hmm. Because I wanna I wanna know what it what I what I can, you know, tap into through that. But the the album is like very intentional and I'm like putting out some themes that are like I think important. So yeah. Gotcha. And so are those two separate? Gotcha. So you're tapping into the mind, you're tapping into the mindless mm -hmm. with those two. Mm -hmm. And is one coming before the other? Are they coming together? Um one has already started. Okay, Honestly, sure. mentioned like normal and N two B. If you go listen to those, gotcha, you see gotcha. the the cover with the mask. Yeah, yeah. That's like going into that world of minus dimension. Okay. But yeah, that's definitely before. Yeah. And I'm like scared, honestly, because people are gonna be like, "What is this, bro?" It's like, mm. my mom is gonna be mad. <laughs> I'm gonna get phone calls from people from my old church. It's yeah. Gonna be crazy. Yeah. But with the mindless one, and is that? A worry at any point or are you just like this is i mean i'm here now so are you like is that one like are you timid to put that one out at all a little bit but i'm like i run to fire that's what yeah. i just like to do i like to run into mm -hmm. the fire and say whatever it's definitely going to be existing in a lot of these diy punk little hardcore pockets cool. in the city yeah so we're gonna yeah it's it's, it's definitely a lot of just high energy just some yeah. rage and just cool it's dope yeah it's really cool to hear all this um, because just in my preparation for this interview, I was going to ask just like in my mind, I do see you as just a, a schemer. <laughs> and so I, was, I like I, I'm hearing these schemes coming out and it's it's I like it. I like it a lot. I like where your mind is going and what uh, is to come in the future. That's that's super exciting. Schemer. Damn, that's new. <laughs> I don't know. If I, is that, I do, do you resonate though. with that? Shapeshifter. Okay. And uh, yeah, I plot, I plot, I, plot. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a schemer, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't no scheme anybody on some weird shit. But right, not in a that. negative yeah. connotation at all. Yeah, for sure. scheming as in you oh, have yeah. a lot of plans. Yeah, and you definitely some propaganda coming <laughs> for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I do want to um, just rewind a little bit because I couldn't help myself but ask about just like your acting background and stuff. Like I was, I watched uh, Anna's Playground this morning. Mm. And what was like? What was it like working on short films like that? Fire, yeah, it's dope experience, man. I uh, I learned a lot from acting. Just mm. uh, taking into music. That's why it's like a, it's a whole, yeah, it's a whole thing. But that specific movie, that was my first, uh, not my first, but it was like my first like big budget short film that I was in. Yeah, that was wow. We we shot it like winter like just this like just as winter was approaching cedar riverside there's a whole set oh it was uh, here yeah it was here wow we built a set in cedar riverside no like way. do makeup inside like those project buildings you know what i mean wow. um the director eric howell from la uh decided to do it here um uh, it was cr crazy it was like two weeks uh it was blistering cold though yeah, yeah dealing yeah. with the elements yeah. But like it was a, it's a movie about um, armed conflict, like children in armed conflict. Yeah. And yeah, I got to you got to explore that. It was cool, man. It was it was wild. It's wild. I I literally felt like Denzel Washington. No, was, I one hundred percent. I would too, especially at that age where you, it it's wild. all like seems like huge. I'm sure. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Yeah. Did you audition for that, or did like? You have someone, how, okay. So my agent <clears throat> sent me to that. I feel like there's only two. There was one big audition, open call. Okay. And I literally, like, went to the audition with, like, me and my mom, like, ripped holes in, like, my shirt, like, threw dirt on it, just Went to, like, be out. in the role. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? Which, like, just really helped. And uh, we did that, uh, I don't know, people out there might know lynn blumenthal she's like a legend in like the casting world in this in the city when it comes to like she she cast for a lot she had, like for a lot of big movies she's done that um but yeah there was like a initial audition and then like a i got the call back and did well with the call back met the producer and then yeah my agent let me know that i got picked for it 
and then yeah. just like the process started. It was mm-hmm. cool, and it and it went up for a, uh, an Oscar, for Oscar for that like yeah. the short yeah, yeah. film category. So it did That's, did really well. Yeah. Where yeah. after that, were you like, okay, this is what I want to do, or was it just kind of like that was really cool? Now whatever happens happens. It's a little bit of both. Okay. Minnesota is not the. At that point, I joined Screen Actors Guild. And uh, it's just like a union, but it's like, it's it's the union that's connected to like <clears throat> the bigger jobs in acting. So it was just like, being in Minnesota is not a SAG town, so like it was just hard to uh, get that type of work. You know, I'm getting a lot of commercial work and things like that, but for films, you gotta be like in LA or like yeah. you know certain yeah, yeah, certain yeah. meccas and things mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, um, that was a good little exposure to that that world. And I definitely am going to make a rendezvous back. Cool, but yeah. I I wanna I wanna explore this medium of music and act through that, like my music videos and yeah. all that. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, a lot of cool things to come. Anything else on your radar that's coming up that you're excited about? Anything? Um, I'm excited to do, so I I moved back from L.A. in January 2022, and I spent that time till now just reacclimating myself into the Minneapolis scene. Yeah, right. I've grown to know a lot of talented artists out here, love the scene out here, mm-hmm. it's, it's going crazy. We're going to continue to just keep shocking the world and yeah. putting out great stuff so for me on my radar is you know uh you know throwing some really impactful shows in the city uh for the people and i'm excited to do that with like my release show you know doing some supporting things with some good friends or super talented uh coming up but yeah, you know, uh, yeah, a lot in the album, first project, yeah, merch, and a lot of other cool announcements just on like the back end, business wise. So yeah, man, I just been working. Yeah, been working. One hundred percent. And I, yeah. I really appreciate how much kind of love and passion you show through your music, but also through your presence, like you were saying. And um, I think you hit the nail on the head by saying like, you if. You're a local artist. You've probably seen me at one of your shows because you go around a lot, um, especially just here in Minneapolis. I wanted to ask, too, like, what are some of the highlights or, like, the best parts of going mm. to shows in Minneapolis and being a part of this music scene as a spectator and then also as an artist? <clears throat> as a spectator, man, there's some crazy stuff out here, yo. Mm-hmm. Like, we are... I don't even want to say we're slept on. It's... it's in due time. Okay. We all just collectively just need to continue to make beautiful art and it's going to do the rest. Like, but man, the hardcore scene out here is some of my, it's my favorite. Okay. Low key. Uh, just going to DIY spaces, a garage, uh, you know, a coffee shop. Yeah. Just seeing it packed out mm-hmm. and just seeing just like mosh pits that aren't push pits. They're like, you know, crowd killing, just yeah. crazy, like real hardcore, yeah. like that culture. I don't, I really resonate with the punk scene like a lot because mm-hmm. I just feel like I've always embodied that energy. But it's just such a, it's such a cool thing. So I saw uh, this band Gel. I think they're from New Jersey. Okay. <clears throat> at uh, literally in this basement, and they're like huge in that scene, and that was okay. crazy. I think my <clears throat> my boy Noah put that on. I'm not sure, but there's bands like Giallo. Um, primitive force, love kill us online. Yeah, they just just always just ragers, man. Just mm-hmm. incredible. Uh, Heart to gold is really cool out here. Uh, Grandma is super cool. Uh, Prize horse is really dope. Um, as far as like artists that kind of like hybrid themselves with a band, <clears throat> Haroon goes crazy. Papa, so, yeah. um, fruit punch lover boy is dope. Zach Khan is dope. Aiden intro is dope. Nate Walker, just they just <laughs> yam. You know, Martine on the drums, he be killing it. Uh, grip of homies, man, just just yeah. crazy. It just I don't know. Every time I go as a spectator, it's just it's just cool to just like be fans of the people around you. You know what I mean? It's yeah. always just like I'm inspired. Right. Every time I go to a show mm-hmm. locally. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like that's cool. Um, but as an artist, yeah, it's also just cool to like dissect how they go about it you know right. what i mean and 
every band and every artist goes about it differently. Every crowd is different. And so just understanding, like, even demographic-wise, like, what certain frequencies and, and vibes, what they bring, you know, and seeing just all the different pockets of people. So, yeah, mm-hmm. crazy, crazy. I'm trying to put together, like, festival. Just, yeah. just a I can mixed see the bill. gears turning, yeah. Mixed and, bill, just some crazy yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Oh, I forgot Juice Lord. All the, <laughs> man. Well, yeah, the, the people game. you performed uh, at the ASP show with and at the, probably the Juice Lord show too, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> All those guys are crazy. Mm-hmm. Righteous MC, Juice Lord, June the Kid, Seku, HP's craziest producer, uh, Bushido Chop, Vinny Crooks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to forget nobody, so I'm, I'm going to stop. Savano's actually really dope, too. She uh, opened up for Juice Lord at 7th Street. Super talented. Just multidisciplinary. Poet, singer. You know, that was a really, really cool... Uh, as far as like Spectator, that was a cool show to be as well. Juice Lord's um, yeah, the EP opening. Yeah. Uh, at her set, she really just like, just like brought it to like a just spoke to the crowd, which yeah. like you just don't see. It's usually just music, you know. But she was able to just like speak and just use her voice and mm-hmm. spread powerful messages. So yeah, there's a there's like a long range of just. Mm-hmm. Dope stuff out here. So yeah, and it's cool it's to wild. like be inspired by the huge artist, but it's really cool too to be inspired by just the people around you and your peers that are also doing these really incredible things. I feel like it'll se- seep into your own artistry as well. Shout out Rock Barboza too. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm inspired by what's going on here. Mm-hmm. I was inspired in LA. There's a lot going on there, you know. But here it's just like it's, it's mad different, and uh. So yeah, it's, it's we on our way for sure. It's yeah. just like as a unit, we just got to keep pushing and let go of any anything that's gonna stop us from continuing to collaborate and grow together. Yeah, we don't need no egos. We don't need no nothing. No competition. Friendly, push each other. Iron yeah. sharpens iron. Yeah. That's important in any community. But like, if we just kind of, you know, if you do well, I do well. You know, we're just trying to. You know, just, like, break the ceiling open, and then everybody's going to be seen, you know? Yeah. So that's how I feel like. Yeah, and yeah. I can be more excited for that, and I can be more excited for everything the future holds for you as well. Sure. Any parting words, any words of wisdom, anything you want to leave us off with today, Ricky? Man, I would say everyone's got it. Man, we have different battles that we deal with. Everyone is dealing with some different things. Everyone has a different purpose, but I feel like truly finding why you're on this planet, why you're breathing, you know, and continuing to, like, focus on that vision for yourself and and the things that you want to do despite maybe not feeling supported, maybe not feeling like people are paying attention or or maybe just trying to do things that that don't exist. I feel like we, this world needs... It just needs bold people. So, like, don't afraid to be bold. Don't be afraid to be bold, right? Make bold actions. Make bold art, you know? Push through trailblaze, you know? Be alone in in what you believe in. I think, like, it's just mad important. We just need more individuals. And don't, yeah. I feel like it's good to be influenced and inspired by other things and other people because that's natural, but... We need a lot of people who are just trying to experiment and just do things that don't exist. I think that's mad important. That's why Minneapolis is great, because we do that within our art. But just on a human level, if you don't do that, understand you're here for a reason, you know? And, like, uh, I feel that the world is in a is in a wild place. There's a lot of things going on. Um, it's hard to know what to focus on. It's hard to know who you are. Uh but I think, like, we have to spend some time being mindful and pulling back the layers and the distractions and understanding that, like, we as beings, we are connected, interconnected and here for one another. And uh, I think it's just important just, like, for the future, the next generation, all this, like, we got to just you move as one, like, move move as a human race, corny and cliche as it sounds is just mad important especially for where we're headed 
um, technology, AI, and things like that. We're just in a world where, like, we're interfacing and things are evolving at a fast rate. So us human beings, we need to, we need to just, like, stay connected and, like, understand why we're here. So, yeah, parting words yeah. is Reiki. Thank you to Radio K. Thank you to the Vanguard for having me. It's been beautiful. Uh, I look forward to seeing people in the flesh uh, come to a show near you. A lot of music coming. A lot of cool collaborations coming with some of your favorite artists from out here. And yeah, man, we're going to keep keep going. Yeah, be smooth. For sure. Ricky, thank you so much for your time. For sure, man. Appreciate you. you.